Hello everyone, and welcome to part 5 of how to make a point and click game in Unity. So, at this point we made it so our block can jump around the screen, and we made this cursor, this crosshair, fall around our cursor. But now there's still quite a few things we need to get done. For instance, we need to make it so the game can detect when it's the object is being clicked, and we need to make it feel more like a game. You know, create a setting in order to interact with. So to begin, let's get click detection. So I'm going to open up the block movement script, and here we are. So all we did before was make it move around after it drops to a certain position below the x-axis, and now the way I'm going to do click detection is with the function void on mouse over and this function um, is activated when your mouse is over an object's collider. However, since our block here doesn't have a collider, that means we're going to have to give it one. And the next thing I do is I want it so if you press the um, left mouse button, I want it to do something. So I'm just going to test that it's detecting clicking by making it print the word click. So now, if I were to click play, There, it de detected the click. So now begs the question of what do I want to have happen after you click it? Because I could make this get destroyed and disappear. I could make it so it gives you a certain score. So it really comes down to how I envision my game. And what I want it to be is just a mini game, you know, like a uh, carnival game where you have to, I don't know, shoot something that's being thrown, like discuses or something. Yeah, those ceramic discs, and you gotta shoot them out of the sky, and they'll be traveling different trajectories across the screen, and there will be different sizes, and some will take different shots. Yeah, that's how I want it to go. Then I want the main goal to be to destroy all of these discs through a series of 10 or so different rounds in order to get the highest score possible. So to create that kind of game, let's think about what we still need to do. I would like to make it so each of these blocks has a different set way of getting in. like. Maybe we're going to have the blue be really small, and we're going to have it fly around the screen. Well, maybe not that small. We'll have it fly around the screen. Maybe we'll have some of these spin and just pop out from behind some mountains. And the way the levels will progress is that they'll start with really easy, basic movement, maybe have one block at a time and then closer to the end of it you'll have a lot of this stuff going on at once and the game will really be testing your ability to shoot these blocks so what I'm gonna do is create a new scene Ooh, yes I want to say what I did here and I'm going to be create this this is our level design and I'm going to open up GIMP and just create some props that I want to use to create the scene. So when you get your GIMP open, let's open it up. The size doesn't really matter. And I just want to sketch out how I want this game to look like. Alright, so on the bottom I want some sort of hill. Grassy hill. 
And then in the background, I want some mountains. That way there's just some depth. I'll probably try to avoid colors that are already being used for blocks the best I can at least. And then in the background, there's going to be some light blue sky. And what we're going to do is we're going to have one set of blocks going from mountain to mountain, and then further, and they'll get a little bigger the closer to the front of the screen you get. We may also have, like, at the front part, we'll have, like, a few objects to jump out of, just so stuff can be jumping out at you. So I would like to take some time in order to really develop how I want my scene to look like. So I'll do that off camera. And I'll come back when I've finished sketching the scene. So here's the scene I decided to go with. It's going to be kind of reminiscent of a duck hunt. But here's basically what's going to happen. I'm going to make it so bigger blocks come out from behind this grass here. And then there will be smaller blocks that will jump into the tree from the edge of the screen. And then further back, there will be blocks jumping out of the mountains that are even smaller, or even raining from this crowd, cloud at the furthest point. And this will just help us give a, get a good idea of how layering works and how we can get interesting results when we tweak with the scale of our blocks. And just to give it a bit of a challenge for the player, some of the blocks will need multiple hits to be destroyed. So the challenge will come from making sure you get can see the blocks and know where they're going to come from, being able to hit blocks of varying sizes, and trying to beat your high score or move on to the next level. Now, when we go build this scene in Unity, it's important to know that you can't just split apart these different pieces. You gotta build them separately and then import them into Unity as different pieces. So I would have to recreate this tree as a separate sprite, this cloud is separate, and these mountains is separate already started with the uh, sky and grass. Also, if you're curious as to how I made these sprites, I suggest you working with the grid. I used a 16 by 16 grid with this one, and use a limited color palette. Like this grass only uses three colors. The colors I used for the grass are the same as these tree leaves, and the colors that I used for the uh, tree here is very similar to the colors I used to the dirt. The mountains back here only use two colors. The sky is just one sky blue color, obviously. And then the cloud is just white with a gray outline. You don't need to make your scene look exactly what I, this one does, but it's, if you want to follow along well, I recommend just creating something that you would be working with different layers. Anyway, that just about wraps it up for this video. Next time I will place, create this scene in our Unity level and we'll begin making our game a bit more interesting. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about what I have done or comments for how I can improve my videos, please let me know in the comments and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.